Oh, okay, that's cool. just love you tonight and we lift up your name we thank you lord we just lift up this court to you lord tonight we pray for this site we pray for god that you will put us out there and and highlight our our server to people if there are young people out there that are looking for a christian server dear god open up their hearts to what we're doing here Draw them into our server and let them feel your presence in the name of Jesus. Amen. remember when I was in college we would um, they had this thing when you when you first got there they 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 had a gymnasium and it was full of tables and each table was represented a different as- assembly of God church in the area that you could go to and work with while you were in college and you know they would give you a ministry or whatever and you would it was like an interview you would interview the church and the pastor, and they would interview you, and it kind of reminds me of Discord with these Christian servers, you know, they're looking at you, and they're you're looking at them, and they want to know, you know, what do you got to offer, and and I do think it, it is a, I didn't choose, I, I couldn't choose every church, I had to choose one, and sometimes the one that you chose in the beginning, it wasn't the one you ended up with. And, uh, but it was interesting. But anyway. It used to be what was happening with me in those times of our first sweet communion. God is awake, heard your voice every day when I first.
That's not good. They give me... <laughs> they give me the chords, but they don't give me the words. How dumb is that? I had the same problem looking up this song before. I'm going to have to try to find it. I love this song by Keith Green. Did you hear that? I don't have the words right. I'm going to write it down because I got it right here. I just got to write it down. I wonder if I did that. I wonder if I did that because I, I wrote a few songs down. But I, it would have been on a. somewhere else. Thank you. 
to get the words well, let's share a little word tonight and then we'll we'll close um, back to havoc Habakkuk. I love this prayer of Habakkuk. In verse 2, Chapter 3 says, O Lord, I have heard your speech and was afraid. O Lord, revive your work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make known in wrath, remember mercy. Amen. So, I got to thinking about this yesterday, and it kind of triggered something in my mind. We've been doing this, me, for this online ministry since, well, really since, I'm going to say officially we probably launched April 2013. So, I say almost 11 years. And it's a long time to be doing any ministry. Of, you know, I know pastors that stay at a church for 11 years, but a lot of pastors don't. They move on, they go to a different church or whatever. But it's easy to grow weary in well-doing. You know, in Galatians, in the sixth chapter... Let us not be weary in well doing, for in due season we shall reap if we do, if we faint not. Or another translation says, if we don't lose heart. It's easy, you know, like I said, to lose heart or to get. Um, worn out, weary, to lose enthusiasm, to burn out, to become almost like a mechanical, robotical, going through the motions and not have your whole heart and your whole being into it. And, and the challenge of any work, of any ministry, is to keep it fresh every day. Is to keep it on your, it's in your heart, it's in your soul, it's a passion, it's a part of you, it's, it's an extension of your relationship with God, because that's what ministry is. Ministry is an outflow of our relationship with God. That's why a pastor should be preaching of his own, the word of God, first and foremost, but he ought to be relating it to his own experiences and his own life. 
a preacher, a minister ought to be sharing out of their own experience. It's hard not to because when we're communicating, we're communicating what's what's in our heart. What is God saying to us? What is God doing in us? And we're relaying that to other people through our message, through our ministry. But it's easy to lose sight of the vision. It's easy to lose sight of the goal. What did you start out doing? What was God saying to you when you started? What was his mission? What was every ministry should have a mission statement? It should be what is defines their ministry. What is the defining message? Now we did that. You know, we were to, you know, connect people to Jesus online. That was our message. That was our mission. And if I was to stop now and say, well, I'm retiring from this or I'm not going to do it anymore. I would say without a shadow of a doubt, it was a great success. Because, <coughs> excuse me, because the Lord did many things. That's why it would be a great success. Because the Lord touched many lives brought many people into his kingdom and i hope and pray many of them are still in the kingdom today now i do know that when i follow up with people like from years ago on facebook and that i still see them there was a guy recently that used to be in um discord and he connected with me on facebook and he i just saw that he had commented on one of my trump posts but then he deleted the message I don't know what it was. <laughs> Maybe it wasn't good. <laughs> but he deleted it before I had a chance to see it. But I, you know, as a pastor, as somebody that, you know, is not just doing this, is a, a game or fun or whatever. I'm actually doing this because I care and I want to see people saved and I want to see people grow. And that, that's my, that's, that's my heart, you know, whether I'm doing this or if I'm doing whatever I'm doing, that's going to be my focus because I don't see any other, other reason that we would be doing it to glorify Jesus and to help people grow. But we must stay encouraged and this is a couple things that we need to think about. We need to make sure that God is still in what we're doing. That is crucial. Very crucial to whatever our mission is, whatever our focus is. Because you can't outstay your welcome in a ministry you can you can stay too long and then that can be detrimental and that happened to me it happened to me i stayed in a church that i was uh, pastoring too long and it, and it pretty much killed me spiritually because they, they didn't want to grow they didn't want to you know i went from very successful evangelistic ministry traveling and preaching and you know, seeing people saved and filled with the spirit and healings and miracles and just tons of things happening to just all of a sudden, I don't even want to get into why and all that, but changed, I changed gears, went in a different direction. And, and you know, I made a mistake. I just say it. I made a mistake. I, I did not follow the Lord in that. And it about killed me. But that was my fault. You know, I didn't listen. I was trying to appease other people. And you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. Your number one obligation in life is to please God. Jesus Christ, number one. And we can make mistakes, but we got to learn from them and we got to grow through them and get to where God wants us to be. We have to know that we're where Jesus wants us to be and that he's with us in what we're doing 
and his hand is still upon it. Because if his hand is still upon us in what we're doing, then we can put our full faith and heart and soul and everything into it. And we can know that God is there and he's going to bless it and he's going to bring it forth and he's going to do what he wants with it. But we have to know that. If we're indecisive, that's when we become ineffective. If we're indecisive, we're ineffective. Because we're not fully putting our hand to the plow. If we're looking back or we're looking around or we're thinking there's something better or maybe we're not doing what God wants us to do anymore, that's where we need to shut everything down and go and seek him and pray until we're sure, until our heart is steadfast, unmovable, unshakable, and abounding in the work of the Lord, as Paul said. We have to make sure that we're doing what Jesus wants us to do. When Peter and them had gone out fishing, they caught no fish. And Jesus shows up and he says, cast a net over there. Why? They were in the right place at the right time. I can honestly say in this ministry, we have been in the right place at the right time most of the time. <laughs> Thank God for that. We've been blessed. We were on Wire Club at the right time. And God moved, and it was a sovereign ministry with people being saved. Then when that ministry, I knew it, I knew I had to leave Wire Club. I knew the time had come, and and God let me know. But he wasn't through, and we went to Rabbit Chat, and then God blessed on Rabbit Chat. And in some ways, even more than he did on Wire. It was amazing. Now, we've moved from different sites and done different things. But every time, whenever our feet have landed, even Discord, we've seen God move. We saw young people that were coming into Bible studies. At one time, it's hard for me to believe, but we had almost 15 admins. And they were all young people that were helping us. And a lot of them... <laughs> They were just gamers and people that wanted to do bots and stuff. But I knew that. But they were helping us in some way. And so it was good. But, I mean, I think about that now. And I'm like, okay, that was great. But it's it's like the old saying is, what about now? You can't live in yesterday's blessing. See, that's the problem that a lot of ministers and ministries they bask in the in the former glory i mean yeah in the former glory instead of the latter glory they're living in the past instead of the current moment now israel had to be on their toes to follow the lord he was moving th them through the wilderness rapidly And they were taking territory from the enemy everywhere they went. They were gobbling up like Pac-Man. They were gobbling up the land. <laughs> there's a there's a meme for you, Pac-Man. They were gobbling up the land as they went for the Lord. And God was with them everywhere they went. But they had to be on their toes from the minute that that death angel came and, and the blood was they had to apply the blood to the doorpost they had to eat the passover with their sandals on because at any moment they were going to be dis dispersed to flee into the wilderness and they had to be ready to go and that was the way it is that's why the gospel is the shoes of the gospel because you better have your shoes on you better be ready at any minute to share jesus with somebody you better be ready to go at any given time in the direction the lord wants you to go remember this is if we if we learn anything from the book of ezekiel we learn that god's throne is mobile it moves god has a moving throne the eyes of the wheels and everything that was moving that was the throne of god remember ezekiel was in the glory he was in the throne room of heaven but that that throne was moving god was moving 
that song, God is on the move, hallelujah. That's true. God is on the move. But we've got to catch that wind. And we've got to go with God. Because if we stay back, Moses said, Lord, I'm not even going to go up unless you go with us. And God's like, well, you know what? That's good, Moses, because I'm moving. You better get on and follow behind because I'm moving. Jesus was moving through the New Testament, through the Gospels. He was moving. He was going from town to town, preaching the kingdom and doing his works. In the book of Acts, the Holy Spirit comes. Jesus Christ from the throne of heaven is moving to the Holy Spirit in the early church. They were on the move. God is always moving. We can't stand still. But we have to be so cautious that we don't get stagnant. That we don't try to stay in something that God has moved away from. Okay. Very important. And we have to hear what the Spirit of God is saying in order to stay in the spirit and be where the Lord wants us to be, where he plants us. Now, I believe we're on discord in God's will and in God's time. I do. If I didn't believe that, I wouldn't be on here. Um, I think, though, from a practical standpoint, even if we just used it as our own internal communication app, it would be fine. It's not like it's a deal breaker if nobody came to our server. I don't feel that. I think there's other things that we're doing right now to get people. And one thing that I can touch, the, and, you know, you know, like when you put your foot in the water, okay, and you, or if you get out there and you're, in a kayak, if you ever kayak, the wind will start moving you. And you go in the direction of the wind. Because why? Because it's easier to row with the wind than it is against the wind, right? It's easier to go with the current than against the current. That makes sense, right? Well, when we're talking about where is God moving in our ministry, it's Sunday night. It's that Sunday night live stream. That's where the spirit is moving. He's also moving a little bit on the Facebook and that prayer meeting that I'm doing for America, that is where the Spirit's moving. That's where God is touching people are coming into this. in a little bit, not a lot, but a little bit. There's things that we're going to start in the fall. I believe that we're going to tell at that point, are we marching in the right direction? I have no problem shutting everything down. You understand that. And saying, let's pray. Let's fast as a group. We should do that anyway. But let's seek God. But we got a few months to go before the election. I feel like God's wind is blowing me in that direction. And I'm preaching and I'm praying. I'm, I'm putting everything into this in my heart for this nation. Because I love America and I love our country. And I want to see God move in our country. I don't want to see our country be destroyed. And I don't think God wants it to be destroyed. <laughs> but I think we have got to pray. we got to do everything we can. Not that it's on us to do it. It's God. He's sovereign. He'll do it. But he is looking. Well, it's like Ian Bound said, God does nothing but what he does through prayer. Prayer, you know, somebody said, well, God could just send a revival. Sure he could. But in every instance, he's people prayed and then God answered. That's how it works. So if we're doing those things, if we're praying, if we're seeking him, if we're doing all the things that he tells us to do in his word, then guess what? He'll honor his word. But that's where I feel like God's marching and moving. And so we need to take those things and we need to capitalize on them, if it were, and use them to our full advantage. Now, I'm not saying that I don't believe there is anything. And we just had two people come into Discord that were looking for spiritual help. Again, you know, it's so hard to tell sometimes in these types of sites if people are just trolls or if they're really, you know. <laughs> I, I definitely believe that the first guy that came in was genuine because I've known him for a while. He, he's not a troll. 
I do believe he was seriously. I have talked to him about things. I believe he was serious about his repentance, which is awesome. I mean, I don't know why he came in other than we've been praying for this, for God to move. So we shouldn't be surprised when he does. But we, we keep going, we keep doing it until God shuts it down all the way. If he shuts it down all the way, then it doesn't mean we're done. It just means that maybe there's something else. I don't believe God's going to ever just totally take me off the internet. It's just too much of my life is invested in it. Not that I wouldn't. If he said to me tomorrow, I want you to stop this online and I got something else, I would, whatever the Lord wants. He knows my heart. I'm wet. I'm willing to do whatever because I know it wouldn't work anyway. If he wasn't in it, it's not going to work. You can't fit a round peg in a square hole. You, you can't do it. You just got to figure out if the definition of crazy is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. Well, we don't want to become crazy. But sometimes in the ministry, it does seem crazy. And sometimes God just, there's a time where you just have a drought. And then it's like the calm before the storm. And you wait it out. And then all of a sudden God moves and you say, see, you, you waited and God honored. So we got to know which is it. Is he saying, I'm not moving in this way anymore. Where, then you got to pray. That's where you have to pray and say, well, where are you moving, God? Where are you saying you want me to go? What do you want me to do? But he hasn't given me anything else. He hasn't shown me anything else. My heart, my desire is still on here. It's. Uh, I think if he wanted me to do something else, he would shut this all down. I wouldn't have a desire. I wouldn't have an interest. I mean, there's been times where I thought about it, where I've kicked it around. I've even prayed about it. Sometimes I get discouraged and I'd say, Lord, I, I, I'm just tired of this. There's nothing happening. And then God will do something. He'll Somebody will come in. Somebody will say something. And it just triggers me back. And, you know, it's like that old saying, just when I thought I was out, you pull me back in. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's so sort of how I feel sometimes. But see, I'm a result-oriented guy. I believe that we should see fruit. And I'm not, I've sat in ministry. I did that before where we saw no fruit, but I kept praying and I kept believing for it. But at that time in my life, I had, I think not going to get into everything, but I think there was some burnout going on in me at that time too. And, and, and I think that my dad had passed away. It was about 96, 1996. He had passed away of cancer and things. And, and I just, I was devastated and I had a lot of things going on in my life. And I, and I think that had a lot to do with it. My miss missing God signals and still very young in the Lord wasn't really, you know, as mature as I would have liked to have been to be able to handle things. Because I got saved and then I got called into the ministry and everything happened so quick. And I mean, like within a year of my getting saved and, you know, got my GED, then within a year I was in Bible college, I was gone. I mean, I moved away. I, I was in college. I was studying for, for my ministry and all that. It just happened quick. And then, you know, things, I just started advancing in my ministry. And God was blessing and doing great things. And then it just sort of dried up. I didn't know how to handle that. I didn't know what to do. But I sat there and sat there and just kept, you know, trying to prime a dead pump that wasn't going to pump any water and you got to know when to stop you got to that's the hardest thing you ask any man minister the hardest thing is to know when to get out of something to know when to move on and when to stay because we don't want to move on that's the problem we want to think that lord you can do something with this you know so you could bless this mess <laughs> only you can
<laughs> you can bless this mess. And God's like, yeah, I can. But that's not always, it might not be for me. Maybe the next guy that comes in here, God will give that pastor a vision for the congregation or that church will have a different vision. You know, uh, sometimes you need a new person. Uh, I was trying to train somebody to take over this ministry. I had given a couple of people um, the nod if they wanted to sit under this ministry and learn it. And I was going to tell them, you know, one day I would like to be able to have more uh, evangelism outreaches and not run a day-to-day -day site. And I was trying to get somebody that would take it and run it. And I had a couple people at one time and then it just kind of fell apart. But it's hard to do this ministry because so much of it is just what I learned by trial and error, by experience. And you can't teach experience to people. Like you couldn't come out of Bible college and just go, oh, I, I'm, I have a degree in theology. I can do this. This is not that kind of thing. You have to be able to sit in front of a small group or a larger group or whatever. You have to be able to, you know, understand how the Internet works, how chat rooms work. I mean, I didn't know any of this when I came out. I didn't even know how to build a website. I knew nothing. Well, I learned and should have learned something in 11 years. But the point I'm making is this. At the end of the day, I've gone back and forth in my mind. And I do think you and Lashia and Game Warrior, and there's a few other people. Um, there's actually more people than actually attend that I feel like are still a part of this ministry. I know there's people praying for us. There's people that don't always come to things. I mean, when you think of all the people that we've touched in the years, you'd think we'd have a lot more, but a lot of that was because of, some of it was because of COVID and some of it was because of all the different websites and changes and it was just hard to follow us. And I get that. And that's nobody's fault. It's the price of not having the technical knowledge to build, you know, what we needed to build. If we were, if we had resources to hire somebody to engineer it, that we would have had that 10 years ago, we, would, we wouldn't have had as many problems as hiccups as we've had. Can you imagine if a Facebook or a Twitter would have had as many different phases <laughs> as we did? They wouldn't be in existence. They'd have, they'd, have, they'd have rolled up years ago. But at the end of the day, I feel like I'm still where God wants me to be. I know it because the messages that I'm preaching... If nobody else, like I said last night, I pray that they're touching people's lives. Sometimes people don't let you know. Sometimes people don't say, and, and yet they are. So that's a good thing. We don't always know as ministers. We hope that what we're sharing is something that's resonating with people. But even if it's, even if nobody else in the world is getting anything out of it, if it's touching my life. I know that God is ministering to me. And I know it's not just about me, though, and I don't want it to be just about me. <laughs> I want to reach people that need Jesus. I want to, you know, help people find the Lord and all of that. But I also need to be encouraged. And so if it's doing something for me, and I know what God's doing in my life, he is reviving me. He's stirring me up. The Holy Spirit is speaking to me. I feel the anointing. When I'm in here, I feel like I'm sharing things right now at a level that has to do with my experiences in life and what I've learned. It, it's, I've got almost 40 years of ministerial experience. I know that's hard to believe. It's hard for me to believe it. I can't even believe it when I say it. Uh, maybe not 40. Uh, I'll say 
I'll just wind it down. I'd say 38, 37 years, regardless. It's a huge amount of, of years that I was either in the ministry or coming up in the ministry. And a lot of that was in actual pastoral ministry or evangelism or whatever, working in churches and stuff. So all of that is the stuff that I'm sharing, that I'm giving out, is life experience. It's from a vantage point of suffering, trial and error, not perfection, but just learning and still every day learning. You know, it doesn't matter how long you've been saved. It doesn't matter how long you've been a Christian. You're always going to have to learn to trust the Lord. And learning over and over because experiences in our life change. Experiences in our life can come up. They can change in, in a moment. I mean, you can be an experienced sailor navigating a ship. But if a storm hits, you're still going to have to rely on instinct to get through it. It's not like you're just going to go, oh, this is no big deal. No, every storm is is a challenge. Every storm is something that you're going to have to relearn your faith, relearn how to trust God in that moment, because that's a different experience than the last one you went through. you got to relearn how to have faith and trust God through that moment. So everything I'm doing, I hope and pray, is something that is being used by God. That's the number one. Number two, if I didn't feel the Holy Spirit in the singing and the worship, if I didn't feel the Holy Spirit in the teaching and the preaching, and he wasn't giving me messages that I think are for this group here and for the, the those that would listen, because I know we have people that listen that are on different platforms, YouTube and different things, Facebook. It's not just what we actually see when we're in here. There's people that are watching when we do live streams that are getting the message in Facebook. They comment on it. I know they're watching. But my goal is just to continue to seek God. Revival is my goal for not only America, not only for the church in general, but for us that are coming into these services. I want you to be revived in your spiritual life. I want you to have all of Jesus there is to have because that's what I want. And I don't think you would be here if you didn't. I don't think you would be in this type of ministry if you weren't wanting that. I think that's pretty evident. I don't think this is a real popular type of ministry because we're not talking about prosperity and getting rich and a lot of things that people want. We're not talking about a lot of things that people talk about, I guess. But we are talking about the things that will draw us closer to Jesus, closer to the Holy Spirit. And I do believe God's going to bring a revival in some way, and I don't know how. I know I'm going to be a part of it, though. I don't know how I'm going to be a part of it, but I will be a part of it. <clears throat> but there's that last thing is that he says, if you don't faint, you will reap. And I want to close with that because that's the positive. That's the positive. The devil will fight something that threatens his kingdom the devil will fight something that's challenging him the things that don't challenge him churches that are deader than a darnell churches that are just you know lukewarm and and woke and all that satan doesn't have to bother with them but the only churches that he's concerned about are the churches that are preaching the gospel, that are preaching the cross, that are preaching this crucified life, that are preaching the resurrection, the ascension, the glorification in the rapture, and then the soon return of Christ and all of that. Those churches Satan hates, and he'll do everything in his power to stop them. 
So you also have to understand that, that element. You might be in the will of God. You might be smack dab in the middle of what Jesus wants, but you're being fought with by the enemy. You're being attacked. And you're being hindered. Look at Daniel. His prayer was hindered. Satan has a certain amount of authority and power. And he can fight and he can battle against us. If that weren't the case, Paul wouldn't give it us Ephesians 6 to put on the whole armor. But the reason that we have to put on the whole armor and he said to fight is because we're in a fight. We're in a battle. So you have to know also maybe what we're dealing with isn't just God saying, I'm not with this anymore. and This isn't my will. Maybe it's the opposite of that. Maybe God's about ready to pour his spirit out and do some mighty, wonderful, awesome things. And Satan knows it. He's, he doesn't know everything, but he has a sense that God's getting ready to do something in this ministry, and he's going to do everything he can to try to shut us down. Maybe that's the case. And if that's the case, then we just got to pour more oil on the fire and keep praying and keep seeking God and keep doing what we're doing and keep carrying that cross and doing everything because if it's his will it will it will it will come the holy spirit the power the anointing the blessing everything god wants to do will happen now i know he's shown me some things about the future i know he has shown me some things about the end times regardless this has nothing to do with our ministry online or nothing to do this has to do with eternal things see that i years ago when i was a new pastor, new Christian, new in the ministry. I thought, man, if I preached and people weren't shouting, if I preached and, and people weren't getting excited about the Lord, that there was something wrong with me, that I failed. I would leave a service and I'd be so disappointed. I'd be like, God, no, nobody even said amen. Nobody even responded to me. This is... Nobody got saved today or nothing happened, God. I just, I would feel so horrible. And then over the years, God showed me, are you preaching my word? Are you lifting me up and exalting me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, then that's all you have to do. And it took all that pressure off of me. It made me realize that it's not my job to save anyone. It's my, my job to encourage. Even in, I can encourage people to the word, but it's the Holy Spirit that encourages people. All I can do is preach the word of God and speak it faithfully and seek his face and do what I know I should do. And the rest of it is on God. That's a tremendous pressure off of a minister. Well, what did Paul say? It's not me. It's not Apollos. It's Christ. It's the Holy Spirit. It's God that brings the increase. Once I learned that, <laughs> it's like Rich Wilkerson said one day, he came to our chapel service when I was in college, and he said when he was in Bible college, you know, if people would go out and preach on the weekends, and if you came back and you, you didn't lose your voice, then people would think, well, you must not have had a good service. You didn't even shout. So he said he, he would, if he had a bad service, he'd roll the window down and he would shout all the way home. And then when they would say, how, how was the service, brother? Oh, bless God. It was awesome. You know, he'd be like, I lost my voice. <laughs> and I think to myself, you know, that's funny, but it's true. People think if they didn't cry, if they didn't weep, if people didn't, you know, respond a certain way. And it's, it's all based on emotional reaction. Once I got away from that and realized it's not about that. It's about speaking the word of God. And being faithful to the Lord ourselves personally. Being faithful, having character, having integrity. I mean, coming in here, me and you are having a service. I mean, it's a thing where you don't have to have a huge congregation to be accountable to, to be faithful to the Lord. 
every single time that you do something for God, you're doing it in, in the, with, with, the, with the idea that Jesus is there with you and that you're doing it as unto him. And that's how you see it. That's how you honor God with that. And if it's three people, you do it. And you do it with all your heart and might. And your goal is to, to please the Lord, number one. That's why I do it. I do it to please the Lord. Because I know it blesses him that I'm in here doing this for him, for his glory. Not for mine, not, not for anything else. But also that somebody, like Paul said, I want to impart something to somebody. Not that I could impart anything, but, you know, Paul wasn't saying him, but he was saying his ministry, the vessel that he was in Christ. Through that, the Holy Spirit would impart a gift or knowledge or some enrichment. I love that word. That That's one of my favorite scriptures. I think that embodies what ministry is. You are imparting something to somebody. Now, God will make me emotional. He'll touch my heart. He'll anoint me. He'll do that. And I think if you have more people, too, that brings out more of that kind of a, I think that when I'm sitting here, I'm not, you know, the evangelist, Tim, you know. And not that I'm being fake. It's just, you know, when you're in a different, you do different, the manifestation of the Spirit hits me in different ways. Now, you have seen me more animated and more preaching in different settings. It's funny when I stand up, I, <laughs> if I do, <laughs> when I stand up, I feel like I'm more of an evangelist <laughs> than when I'm sitting down, which is kind of weird. But we all have our little quirky things, you know. Uh, I grew up under a pastor who used to shout. And one time he preached till his false teeth came out and he caught him in midair and put him back in his mouth and kept on preaching. He was an old fashioned Pentecostal preacher. And that's the kind of preaching I sat under. And then I watched Jimmy Swaggart on TV, and he used to shout and get excited when he preached. And that spirit hit me, you know, so many different times. And I would preach like that. And I still have that anointing. It's just, it's a different thing with me now. Uh, what I want to do now is just, I want to see people's lives built up in Christ. That's it. It's a simple goal. I don't have aspirations of a large church. I don't have a desire to be on some, you know, multi-million dollar church staff or whatever. That doesn't do anything for me. I just want every single day to be faithful to Christ with whatever I do, to honor Jesus with that, and that people's lives would be changed. That's it. It doesn't have to be a big thing. I've not, never asked for a, I've really never promoted anything with money on here, which is insane. There isn't, I don't know of any ministries that don't do anything for money. They don't do anything. I don't ask for money. I'm not promoting a book. I'm not promoting anything. Not to say there's anything wrong with that. It's just that that's not where I'm at right now in my life. It's not where I'm, and maybe one day that will be a part of something that I do it's just not right now because I just want to see people saved I want to see young people saved so let's ask God to do it father we thank you I thank you for for Caleb that he has come along in this ministry and thank you Lord that we brought us together game warrior Lashia and there are others Lord we thank you for all that are a part of this ministry. And, Lord, let us connect everybody together. Lord, that's our greatest need is to connect people together in some way. In Jesus' name, give us the wisdom to connect people together. Give us the insight in how to do that, Lord. We tried with a website. We tried different things. God, let it. if it's Discord, then bring it all together here. We pray for the ministry on Discord that, Lord, we come together in agreement right now that you would touch this ministry, anoint this ministry, Lord. Take this ministry, Lord, in your hand and, and Lord, multiply it. Lord, send people to our server that need you, that are hungry, that want to know the Lord. God, you know we're going to teach them. We're, we, you know we're going to bring them into your word. And God, we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Amen.
All right, well, we'll get together tomorrow night for prayer. I feel good tonight. I feel like tonight this was a good, this was a good message because I think it was something I needed. Encourage myself a little bit in the Lord, but hey, that's what David did. He encouraged himself in the Lord is God. Sometimes we got to do that. We got to bump ourselves a little bit and say, okay, just oh my soul, you know. Don't let the devil discourage us and just keep going. But you guys have been an encouragement to me. Well, if, I guess if you weren't here, I wouldn't be here. So it must be something about this that God is doing. Now, I do believe he, he'll send people. He always has. But we just need to keep praying for it. All right. Well, we'll see you tomorrow night. God bless. And don't forget, tomorrow's Friday. Yay. God bless.